everybody. Good morning. It's Pete. Welcome to today's episode of Stocks for Breakfast. Today, we're going to talk about the fact that it's easy to find good trade setups, but the hard part is actually making money. So today, we're going to focus on the first part. And then in a follow-up video, we're going to talk about how to actually turn a good trade setup into a managed, properly trade where you get them, you get the fish on the hook and starts moving in your favor and you don't panic and get out of it just because you had some profits. You understand fully the difference between those scenarios where you should be booking a profit because that's all that's on the table or all that's available versus, wow, the market conditions are really lining up in a big way and you wanna hold on to that thing, maybe have more positions, maybe have more share size and certainly that last part, <clears throat> as I just said, hold those trades longer. You know, it's funny. I think as you advance as a trader, uh, you go through different stages of what bothers you about trading and <laughs> what parts of trading is frustrating. And when you first start out trading, I'm laughing because I've gone through all of them. It's like a roller coaster. Um, in the beginning part of your career, the beginning part of when you first open your trading account, what really bothers you is the first part is like you did all this research or you did all this studying and you, and you read all the books and everything like that. And you're like, okay. I'm going to put a trade on and just like it says on page 75, it's going to go <laughs> boom and I'm going to make money. Um, and, then, and when that doesn't happen on every trade, because that's what it said in the book, you start to get frustrated that the trading system doesn't work. And you go through this crazy cycle of, um, of trying to find the one strategy that does work. And the reality is, which hopefully you know by now, uh, whether it's through me in these videos or in your own trading, it, each trade doesn't need to make money. <laughs> it's, it's really not likely that it's going to anyway. That's the whole point of having an edge. Remember, we say it all the time. My edge happens to be order flow. So I'm watching the smart money buying over time and I'm just hopping on board, right? But that's the whole, that's the definition of edge. You don't need every trade. So you start to learn that as a trader. Um, and then the losing trades don't matter to you as much. In, in other words, uh, I shouldn't say they don't matter to you that much. The, the reality that every trade won't be profitable starts to fade because now that's just the reality of trading. And then quite honestly, like later in later, as you progress, the losses, which is the kind of the next stage of trading, the losses don't hurt as much because they start to get less frequent. Um, and when they do happen, you get to the point where you start to be more disciplined because <laughs> you get one trade that you don't, you're not disciplined on and you, you blow up your week and you're like, well, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> especially don't average into a position. That's usually where the worst part of um, losses come from. You stock moves against you and you, oh, just a little bit more shares. If it only comes back a little bit, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. That's the fastest way to drain your account. So that as you keep progressing, one of the hardest things to do is um, you stop losing money now, you're kind of breaking even, um, and now you're slowly coming out the other side. Uh, what bothers you more than anything in the world, and I hope you have this problem. All the students in the coaching program are starting to realize this now because a, a, a huge part of, of being together on a day-in, day-out basis in real time is we could talk each other through not taking trades that don't make sense. That's a lot of double negatives there, but basically avoiding the trades that you shouldn't be in in the first place. Because remember we talked about in yesterday's Stocks for Breakfast, it's like chasing that balloon in the water. You just keep pushing it away because what should have taken you 10 trades to get profitable is now going to take you 14, 16, 18, 20 trades because you keep making that one, two, three, four bad trade that don't fit your criteria. And now you have to make all those extra trades to make back what should have made in 10. So my point is, after a while, when you really start to understand what you're doing, nothing bothers you more than not holding a big winner nothing. It's actually like a punch in the gut where you had it. You had the position. You had it at the best spot you possibly could. And it moves a little bit in your favor, but you lost money on your prior two trades. And you're like, well, I lost $500 on that trade. I lost $150 on that trade. And now I'm up 800. If I book that 800, I'm now going to be positive 150 and I wipe out those losses. I know mentally that sounds right, but your last two trades should have absolutely nothing to do with your next two trades. That trade is a unique situation by itself. So the, the, the point that I wanna get across here is that today we're gonna to talk about simple setups to find a good idea. And then we're gonna to touch just a little bit on the scenario of when and how to hold longer term 
uh, because we've had that situation a couple of days in a row, and it's actually going to affect one of the setups that I'm going to give you today, which is actually my all-time daily chart setup, uh, favorite setup that we're going to get into on, on the charts today. But again, remember, having this setup and managing winning trades is not the same thing. You need to trade through different conditions. You need to hopefully somebody like myself, a mentor, while you're in the market in real time, or whether it's a swing trade and we could talk through what the scenario would be, um, that's when you really get to the other point where you cut all that time down and trial and error and somebody just somebody can be like, nope, that's that's not the right idea, and then walk through it. And it's kind of it's kind of fun because when we're in the room together during the day or exchanging emails, um, I never give the straight answer because I want you to think. That's the whole point. I want I want you to become a, a great trader on yourself. You don't want me to be a human alert system for you. You want to be able to look at the market and say, I know exactly what I'm looking at, um, and then ask those final questions of what distinctions am I missing. What parts of the of the argument am I not considering, or did I consider all of them, and am I seeing it correctly? So if I ask you those questions and you come back to me with answers, that means you're learning and you're trying to uh, uh, trying to become a, a, a um, an asset to yourself. You're trying to become the money machine yourself, and that's really the goal. I mean, that's why I'm doing this. I hopefully I'm, I'm showing you enough that you could become the asset, that you could become the person uh, um, putting those trades on, managing them properly, and seeing your account grow. I won't say blazingly fast, but certainly with a lot of consistency when you um, when you have the right tools, the right attitude, which is a big part of it too. Uh, but more importantly, the ability to make adjustments. There's a giant feedback loop in trading that when you you, you, know, you put you put a trade on, you get results back. You put a trade on, you get results back, and all of that. The more it keeps feeding itself, and when it's put a trade on, get results, improve. Put a trade on, get. The problem is most traders do this. They keep putting on the same trade and not getting a feedback loop. They're like, oh, that trade made money. Let me make another one. That trade lost money, and they don't pay attention. They don't make those tiny little adjustments to eventually get to the point where you're making more, making more, making more. Or first, you're losing less, losing less, losing less. Then the next part of adjustments is how do I get to the other side and start making more? So what I'm going to do now is we're going to walk through. <clears throat> I'm going to use the SPY as an example. I don't know what's wrong with my voice here. I'm going to use the SPY as an example to discuss what happened in the market the last two days, how those trades could have been and should have been trade, traded relative to the entire market, and making the distinction between um, individual stocks versus what's going on in those ETFs and what's going on in the general market and how they all affect each other. Uh, so first, we're going to start out with reading the SPY, then we're going to go into a uh, uh, easy, super simple strategy that you can implement every single day like that to determine which stocks on a day-to-day -day basis are strong. And you can do the same thing on a week-to-week -week basis. Uh, and then we'll get into my favorite setup that I'm looking for tomorrow with a very simple, uh, but very, very specific um, opening price action that I'm looking for. And I'm going to tell it to you now, but then we'll go to the charts. So what I'm looking for in these stocks today, stocks that I'm looking to buy, I am looking for the stocks to open here, push lower, and then look for a spot to buy. We've had a lot of these opportunities on that same signal, um, both as day trades and swing trades. But today, very specifically, and I'll show you the setup, why I'm, um, I'm kind of, uh, I'm not going to say salivating, but very excited because it's, it's, we haven't had this type of setup uh, in a while where it's been clean. We've had back and forth, back and forth, driving you crazy, gap up, gap down, red candle, green candle. Uh, and that can be a little frustrating, which makes this market a little tough, uh, especially if you're an active trader trying to learn on it. Now, it's good if you're an active trader and you're in this market because you're learning in a super tough market, uh, meaning the back and forth and all the indecision, um, which, by the way, I think I read the news today uh, and there was every single site that I was on and every other page was a different uh, hedge fund manager or economist having a different opinion about where the next six months are going. So don't listen to anybody's opinion. Learn to read the tape and do your own judgment. Nobody on television, there's so many smart people have differing opinions. What does that tell you about their opinion? Have your own opinion. Learn what we're doing here. Learn to read the tape and make your own decisions. On top of the fact that you'll have more confidence in the call because it's your call and not somebody else's call. Um, so anyway, um, we're going to uh, go to the charts right now and take a look at the setup. So the very first thing we're gonna take a look at is the market. So you can clearly see here the SPY just keeps jumping into these trading ranges. So from a trade management perspective, from a winning trade perspective, 
this is actually very tough because right now the decision on whether or not we are absolutely bullish or absolutely bearish is kind of up in the air. And I call this a potential change of trend. Now, you can clearly see that the trend is up. But the big picture here over the last couple of weeks, it needs to break through here for us to have super conviction on the long side to dial up those A plus trades. And we need to break through this to the downside, pause, and then have another momentum move to the downside before we're ready to claim this. So really, technically, we broke the trend here, but started to rally, but we, we kind of got stuck in that range. So in my, 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 um, my analysis, my tape reading uh, structure, is right now we're in a potential change of trend zone. If we break below this again, pause for a couple of days and stay there, that would signify a new trend to the downside. Now, best case scenario, we push down, rally, and then hold this as resistance. But you can clearly see here what's going on um, in the market, which actually takes me to now, how would you manage winning trades over the last couple of days based on what we're seeing in the market? So if we zoom this out a little bit further, and if you are, let me go to the 15 minute chart and we'll go to just the last two days. Something I want to point out here is here's the opening price in the SPY uh, two days ago, which was Tuesday, and here's the opening price in the SPY yesterday, which was Wednesday. You can see that the price of the SPY, the price action of the SPY, was below the opening price for most of both of those two days. So what does that mean? How does that translate into making a trading decision? That means that the short-term order flow is not in sync with the long-term order flow, because the long-term order flow is right now this rally from mid-March, uh, but we're in a potential change of trend. So long-term order flow, meaning the last month and a half, has been bullish. Short-term order flow in the intraday basis was bearish. So you have a conflict of long-term and short-term. That means that you would need to have some uh, um, reservations about being aggressively long while the short-term intraday stock market order flow is weak. So at that point, you would either short sell weak stocks because at that point intraday as a day trade that you're trading with the market, but there are also plenty of tech stocks that we were long because they were trading contrary to the market and following through. I'll give you an example of stock that we were trading yesterday was D-Dog, clearly bullish, clearly bullish all day. Another one that we've been trading quite a bit recently, ENPH, last week and into this week, some really solid moves to the upside. So you get an idea of how you quickly gauge what the market's doing versus what your stock is doing and when it's doing it and how you should manage those positions. So stocks that are strong, they're strong on their own, but then you can even take it a step further. If I'm looking at NASDAQ stocks, which other stocks are in the sector or industry that I'm looking at? So you're going from the top to a little bit lower. So it's not general market analysis because that's kind of not really telling us the picture right now because it's in a trading rate, but then you get NASDAQ, which is strong and breaking out. You would put it in your stock watch, other strong stocks or other stocks in that same sector and get a feel for is money going into that sector individually despite what's going on in the market. If it is, that's another way to hold those winning trades longer and recognize which stocks you should be in. If it's only that one stock, you can still trade that stock long, but be aware that the rest of the sector is not strong and it's only that one stock. It could be earnings. It, could be, it doesn't matter why. Don't, don't focus on why. That's after the fact. So the setups that I'm talking about now, the first one we want to talk about, let's say we know the SPY did this yesterday and specifically the last two days. So here's the super simple strategy that's easy to implement. You're going to look for relative strength or relative weakness from one day to the next. So if we're looking at the market, we know the market was weak. Then we'll go into, let's say, a stock for argument's sake like PayPal. PayPal, PayPal was strong yesterday compared to the market. So that would be one of the stocks that I'd be looking to bid or buy today, bid is a trading term where you're looking to advertise to buy stocks. Because this stock was strong when the market is weak, on a day one to day two relative strength or relative weakness, I would be looking to buy that stock on a buy, especially because there's really nice clean pause after the gap up. We've held it now for four days. Another reason, so it gapped up, paused for four days, and it was relatively strong. So to be clear on the setup, look to see what the market did yesterday and then see which stocks traded contra to that to see if there's setups. And this actually happens to be a perfect one, a really strong bullish stock that traded contra in a bullish way to the weak market today. So this showed solid relative strength yesterday. Now, my other favorite setup, the one that I love the most, actually has unfolded uh, yesterday. So you can see the longer term picture, Lula. You can see very similar trading box. It actually broke out to the upside. That's what we're talking about looking at in the SPY. 
Now we're seeing two weak closes in a row, almost closing on the low. Perfectly on the low would be better. But what I'm looking for today in Lulu is opening lower, finding buyers, and then looking for a new place to buy myself, and then looking for the next swing trade long. So a lot to unpack in here today. What I would recommend is watch this video once to get a feel for it, which is the way you should learn anything. You're not going to learn anything the very first time you read it. Then go over it with a little bit of a notebook, like pause some of the important stuff I said because I gave some good uh, analogies of where you are in the learning curve, what you should be focusing on next, what to, how to go through that feedback loop yourself. Uh, and then ultimately learn those two simple trading strategy setups because they will work for you from one day to the next for finding good opportunities. And then you take it a step further using those criteria that I said, the general market stocks in that individual sector and how you should manage those winning trades as well. And I'm going to tell you this, this is a really important one. Once you get to the point where you have trading discipline, it's the reason if you're not making money, the reason is not because you can't find good trades. The reason is not because you don't have uh, losses properly. The reason is you need to learn this next step, which is learning how to manage your winners. The reason if you work hard and know what you're doing, you're not getting paid is because you need to learn how to manage your winners. That's where the hidden money is in your account. I'm Pete Renzulli. Have a great day. Thank you for joining me on Stocks for Breakfast today. If you like these videos, absolutely please click down and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. Leave a comment and leave us a thumbs up too if you don't mind. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.